What is up guys, Wrestling Premiere is here. Now, today I'm going to be talking about the Long Island loudmouth, Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder's organic rise to the top is definitely one of 2011's bright spots. In this video, I talk about Zack Ryder's rise and Ryder's push being literally pushed off a of stage. Okay, let's get into it. I don't want to really spend 5 minutes on the intro because I kind of waste time with it, so let's go. Zack Ryder in late 2010 was a lower card jobber on Raw. Ryder did have an opportunity to capture the WWE Championship of that year. Sadly for Ryder, he lost that title match in 8 seconds and he continued to compete on superstars afterwards. Zack Ryder in February 2011 decided to make an online show, a show by the name of Z True Long Island Story. This show was seriously awesome. This show included his friends and even his father was in some skits. Like Some of the skits were pretty funny. Like Ryder had a skit where he said he could draw money and he, he literally drew money. Can Zack Ryder get over? There was a lot of gems on that show. When the show started, I believe Zack Ryder had only one shirt on WWE shop. But at the height of the show, there were headbands, t-shirts, wigs. He finally got more toys. A lot of things. Also, what about when he sang those songs in his car? This is how we woo it. Or like a Z6, if I remember. Who could forget Zack's dad? I mean, his dad's favorite wrestler is obviously John Morrison. There was a lot of funny stuff on that show, but right now let's talk about Ryder's organic rise. First of all, I believe this show saved Ryder from being released. Like, Ryder wasn't doing much. He was competing on Superstars and on Raw, he lost to the likes of Daniel Bryan, Evan Bourne, and Mark Henry. Second, the show forced, yes, forced WWE to push Zack Ryder. They didn't even acknowledge Ryder when Raw was in Long Island. He did compete on that week's Superstars taping beforehand though. Ryder that week got the loudest pop on both Raw and Superstars. He got a louder pop than John Cena and whoever was there. Like, he had the loudest pop that week. The Raw that was in Long Island was hijacked by the fans who chanted We Want Ryder. Unfortunately for them, he didn't appear on Raw. Like, they could have given him a few minutes to cut a promo, that's all. Plus, that Raw was a special 3 hour edition of the show. They could have gotten him to cut a promo or something. Like, he could have hit the Rough Rider on some heel after a match. Zack Ryder on that week, superstars turned face due to the fans. Ryder would continue to gain more fans and momentum as the weeks went on. And on the July 25th episode of Raw, Ryder finally returned to Raw and he beat Michael Cole, who was dressed as Triple H. Ryder won the match, and from there, the Long Island IC continued to get more popular. And on that week's SmackDown, Zack Ryder was appointed the assistant SmackDown general manager. I completely forgot he got this gig. I don't think he did anything with it other than to convince a jobber to face Mark Henry. I do know he was on SmackDown a lot, but I don't recall seeing him book a match or something like that. Ryder's official push would begin on the September 19, 2011 episode of Raw. The guest host for that night was Hugh Jackman. Jackman came out during the show, and he was immediately interrupted by Vicky Guerrero and Dolph Ziggler. Ziggler called the fans of Cleveland a bunch of losers and Ziggler then mentioned Hugh Jackman's movie in which he mentors an underdog. Ziggler said that that's just a movie and and then Hugh Jackman would say that he's going to the back and he's gonna find the biggest underdog. The fans began chanting Ryder 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 and Hugh Jackman grabbed a sign from the crowd as you could see. Later on that night, Hugh Jackman began talking to Zack Ryder and he finally found an underdog to face Dolph Ziggler. During the match, Vicky Guerrero got ejected from ringside and Hugh Jackman capitalized on the ref being distracted by blasting Dolph Ziggler with a right hand. Ryder would hit a rough rider on Ziggler to get the victory. The Ryder revolution has began. I mean, it already started, but this was when it officially started in WWE. Like, the fans began hijacking shows and buying Ryder's merch, but this was when WWE started to get behind the Long Island IC. I believe this was also during the time John Cena appeared on Z True Long Island Story. He even did a skit with Zack Ryder if I remember correctly. The Long Island Ice Z challenged for the United States Championship on the September 26th episode of Raw. He was unsuccessful, but only after Vicky Guerrero's new client, Jack Swagger, cost Ryder the match. By the way, who remembers Dolph Ziggler's theme song at the time? It reminds me of WWE 12 so much, but I don't really like that song. I like the song that followed it, the one they uses right now. It's way better than that one. By the way, Air Boom made the save, and then weirdly enough, Teddy Long, who was the SmackDown general manager, came out and booked the tag team match. That match was mostly a handicap match until Mason Ryan. Ryan, aka Bootleg Batista, came out. Booker T reacted to the news with his famous quote, What the hell? Swagger tagged in Ryan, and Ryan stood there and randomly clotheslined Swagger. He then gave a beating to both Swagger and Ziggler while Vicky was screaming. Booker T once again shouted his famous quote, and Zack Ryder picked up the pieces by hitting the Rough Rider on Dolph Ziggler. So, Zack Ryder has beaten Dolph Ziggler two weeks in a row. The next week seen the entire Raw roster walk out on COO Triple H. Even the Long Island Ice Z walked out. But after the show, Triple H stood 
in the middle of the ring when Zack Ryder came out. He said that he's changed his mind and that he can't leave now. He also said that he's more over now than ever. Ryder would take a selfie with Triple H, who proceeded to deliver a pedigree to the Long Island Ice Z. Triple H would grab the phone and say Ryder's quote afterwards. Ryder eventually got a one-on-one -on -one title shot at Vengeance for the United States Championship. Ryder fell short after Ziggler super kicked him. Now, now Dolph Ziggler was in a match beforehand and he beat Ryder in 6 minutes, so he looked like a lower card star after that. He was still popular though. From there, the Long Island Ice Z would main event his first ever Raw by teaming up with John Cena to face Awesome Truth. Man! R-Truth was so entertaining in 2011. Back to Ryder. John Cena would take the pin in that matchup after R-Truth pulled Cena's leg from under him. After this, Zack Ryder started a petition to get himself a United States Championship match this time around. But John Laurinaitis gave John Morrison a title shot, so yeah. Ryder got a bunch of superstars to sign this petition. At Survivor Series in Madison Square Garden, the crowd chanted, We want Ryder during the US title match. And after the match, the Long Island IZ did come out and he hit the Rough Ryder on Dolph Ziggler. The crowd was in the palm of his hands. They chanted with him his quote, woo, woo, woo. He was so over. The fans continued to chant for Ryder even after the main event. And The Rock just had to mention the Long Island Ice Z. The Rock put over Ryder, and to me and probably everyone else, that's a sign of WWE that they should push him. Like, he made it to this point on his own. He didn't need WWE to book a storyline to get him to this point. That is one hell of an accomplishment. For me, Ryder brought social media to WWE. Before Ryder's show, there was hardly any mention of social media, but after the success of Ryder's show and the fact that he got himself over using social media, WWE began using it. I mean, The Rock and John Cena feud escalated mostly on social media, so Ryder in a way is an innovator. Ryder the next night got squashed to the match against Alberto Del Rio. If anything, they should have just had him beat Del Rio in an upset victory after Survivor Series. I mean, The Rock just endorsed Ryder and that's what you're gonna do to him the next night? Ryder, however, would bounce back though by teaming up with Sheamus. The Celtic Warrior did sign Ryder's petition for a US title shot. Anyways, Ryder once again hit a rough Ryder on Ziggler for the victory. Now, Zack Ryder's story from here on would take a turn. A turn for the better or for the worse. It depends on what you think. On the December 5th, 2011 episode of Raw, John Cena was given a social experiment for that night. The experiment was that Cena faces Zack Ryder and if Ryder wins then he faces is Dolph Ziggler for the US title at TLC. But if Cena wins, then he's inserted into the TLC match at the namesake pay-per-view. Cena beat Ryder and he tried to help the Long Island Z after the match. What? But Ryder was upset and he shouted at Cena that it was his one shot. Cena told Ryder to wait up and Cena walked to the back. Look at that! They even made a graphic for that match and it never even happened. Like, imagine if Cena was in that match though. Like, would CM Punk retain the title? It'd have to involve Kane afterwards. Cena after that would forfeit his spot in the TLC match to give Ryder his US title shot, but it wouldn't come that easily as Zack Ryder had to beat the most dominant man WWE had in 2011, Mark Henry. Plus, the match was no disqualifications and no countout. John Cena would interfere and he'd help Ryder get his US title match for TLC. The United States champion, meanwhile, had a match against Sheamus, where if the show off won, then he's inserted into the TLC match. Zack Ryder interfered during that match and he distracted Ziggler, which led to a bro kick from Sheamus. All right. Here we go. TLC, Baltimore. Zack Ryder finally gets his title shot against the show-off Dolph Ziggler. The match was pretty good and Zack Ryder's dad was in the crowd. Ryder, after several months of forcing himself to get over, has finally captured the United States Championship. Man, that TLC 2011 pay-per-view was really, really fun. I just want to know, should I review that pay-per-view? I'm not going to review it now, but perhaps maybe next week? Anyways, the next night on Raw had one of the greatest, it's a meme at this point, or perhaps one of my favorite segments of the PG era. Like, you know what happened. CM Punk, Zack Ryder, and Daniel Bryan kicked off Raw. Remember that? Also, who remembers this picture? Late 2011 was such a fun time in WWE, but this was as good it was gonna get for Ryder as from here on, it's all downhill. Apparently, this Raw drew some low ratings, and rumor has it that they put the blame on Zack Ryder. I don't know if this is true, I'm not sure, but maybe it is. The Long Island IC teamed up with Eve Torres the next week to face Tyson Kidd and Natalia. Random match, but I just wanted to mention it because I believe this was the first time Ryder interacted with Eve. The Long Island Ice Z teamed up with John Cena and Big Show to face Jack Swagger, Mark Henry, and Kane on the first Raw of 2012. Kane didn't appear and the good guys secured the victory. After the match, however, Kane did come out, but he came out from under the ring and he tried to take Zack Ryder to hell, aka 
under the ring. Cena pulled Ryder out of the hole, and then an explosion came out from the hole. Like, what the hell? The next week, King continued to torment Zack Ryder. First up, Zack Ryder asked Eve out on a date. After some thinking, Eve accepted. After the two left, we find Kane coming out of a closet. Later on, Eve Torres was said to face Beth Phoenix. Instead, Kane's music played, and Zack Ryder came out and he took Eve to his car in the parking lot. Then Ryder discovers that his tire's flat. Zack Ryder continued fixing the tire during John Cena's match with Dolph Ziggler, and Cena notices this, and then Kane chokeslams Zack Ryder onto some crates. It's so random. Cena ran to the back where Kane choked him out to end Raw. The Long Island IC the next week was scheduled to defend his United States Championship against Jack Swagger. Despite Eve telling him that he's not medically cleared to compete, Ryder went out there and Jack Swagger hit three gut wrench power bombs on him to capture the US title. Backstage, John Laurinaitis apologized to Ryder after realizing that the Long Island IC isn't medically cleared to compete. Eve began complaining to Johnny Ace, who simply replied with shut up, and he told her that she should respect authority. That's all. Like, he apologized, but he's not gonna give him the title back. Perhaps I should make a people power video in the future? I don't know. If I eventually make a people power video, it's obviously gonna be good, but for now, let's focus on Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder was booked in a false count anywhere match against Kane the next week, and if John Cena interfered, then Ryder will never get a US title shot. Kane destroyed Zack Ryder, and he even hit a choke slam on him through the stage. John Cena did show up, and Kane left through the crowd. Ryder was stretchered out of there, and Eve would blame John Cena for what happened to Ryder, and John Cena would look like he turned heel to end the show. Like, I seriously thought they were finally gonna turn him heel. Look at that face. Like, look how angry he is. They were planning on turning him heel, and he'd get a new theme song and everything. That's for me to discuss another time. John Cena's match with Kane at the Royal Rumble was so boring. It was boring. The two fought in the back, and Kane kicked the door to find Zack Ryder in a wheelchair. Kane would push him to the ring, and he'd give him a tombstone as Eve looked on. Kane was about to go after Eve, but Cena came out and Cena himself received a choke slam. Why does Cena sell the choke slam like that? Like, why do they grab him by his chest? I'm not sure. It's just funny to me. The next night on Raw, Kane said that he'll continue tormenting Zack Ryder until John Cena embraces the hate. Kane went after Eve later on, but then Cena crashed the party and the two brawled. Cena gained the upper hand when he used the steel steps on Kane, and Cena during all of this was laughing. Cena would attempt the AA on Kane through the announce table, but Kane retreated. Alright, what I'm gonna be talking about next is perhaps the most famous part of Zack Ryder's push. On the Valentine's Day episode of Raw, Zack Ryder told John Cena that he's planning to profess his love for Eve. Cena would tell Ryder that every time he appears on Raw, Kane does something bad to him. John Cena would also tell Ryder that he'll bring Eve to him. Later on, John Cena was being interviewed about The Rock when we hear someone screaming. All of a sudden, we see Kane closing the ambulance doors, and then John Cena tries to make the save but to no avail. Kane would enter the driver's seat and he'd drive away, but he wouldn't realize that Eve jumped out of the ambulance. Eve would thank John Cena and she'd stare at him, then, then they kissed. Why did John Cena do this? Zack Ryder was right over there as he was heartbroken. This is not what best friends do. At the end of the night, John Cena would try to apologize to Ryder, but the Long Island Ice Seat was having none of it. He slapped Cena, and Cena took his shirt off as if he's gonna fight. Ryder continued to shout at Cena, and even told him that he was never his friend. Ryder would attempt the right hand, but Cena blocked it and faked the punch. Cena then tried to help Ryder back up, but Ryder told Cena to back off. The Long Island Ice-Z walked out of the ring, and he walked to the back while Kane cut a promo on Cena from the Titantron. Kane said that Cena will embrace the hey, yada yada, but when Cena tried to grab a mic, Kane appeared on the stage and he pushed Zack Ryder off the stage. Well, that's it for Ryder. First of all, he may have gotten his legs destroyed, and I think he suffered an injury from this. And number two, his push was over. That's it, he lost the US title, his girl cheated on him. So yeah, while Zack Ryder was out, John Cena ended his feud with Kane by beating him in an ambulance match. The next night, Eve admitted that she didn't really like Zack Ryder and that she was just using him for publicity. She even called him a child. Then she said that she's gonna use John Cena, and Eve said that she's going to Cena's locker room right that moment. But when she turned around, she bumped into Cena and it was an awkward encounter. A few minutes later, Cena came out and Eve began asking for forgiveness. Cena insulted Eve and he told her that she should go to The Rock as they're both scandalous b Wow! Cena then stared at the camera and said that he's back while Eve went down on her knees crying. He even told her that he's lost a broski for a hoski. Eve would then latch on to Cena and Cena ended the promo telling Eve that he's disease free and that he'd like to keep it that way. Damn. Out of WWE.com exclusive, Eve said that she doesn't deserve to be treated this way. She said that she's scarred for life, and she ended the promo saying that the only thing that she has in common with everyone is the fact that she uses people. 
The crowd obviously began chanting Hoski. Zack Ryder returned on the March 5th episode of Raw with a cane. Ryder cut a promo saying that he's glad that he's never hooked up with even that broski's RB4 Hoskies. Backstage, Eve ran up to Zack Ryder and she kissed him and then he smiled. What the hell? The next week, the Long Island IC confronted Eve and he asked her why she hasn't been answering his calls. She then told him that they should be friends with Benefit. Eve over the next few weeks began baiting Ryder and as you probably know, Zack Ryder at WrestleMania teamed up with Booker T, Kofi Kingston, R-Truth, Santino Morella, and the Great Khali to represent Team Teddy. During that match, Ryder was on fire at the end of the match, and he nearly won the match, but Eve walked into the ring and did Ryder's signature taunt. This led to the Miz hitting the skull-crushing finale on Ryder to win the match for Team Johnny. After the match, Eve began begging Ryder to look at her, and when he did, she delivered a kick to the groin, and Zack Ryder, he looked like a wimp. That's it for Zack Ryder's story. About this push that Zack Ryder got, this is how I describe it. Sure, Zack Ryder got a push, he won the title and everything. But once they made him lose the title and they pushed him off the stage, that's messed up. Like, it's like you're cutting someone's legs and you're expecting them to walk afterwards. He looked like such a loser from this fiasco. Like, who's gonna continue cheering him like this? He looks like a wimp. What WWE did to Zack Ryder was pretty messed up. Like, I don't know if he didn't want to fight for this opportunity. I don't know. But what I see, it's messed up. Every once in a while, it looks like the Long Island IZ has some momentum, but it ultimately leads to nothing except for the Intercontinental title victory at WrestleMania, and even that ended a day later. On the bright side, at least he captured the gold at WrestleMania in the latter match that had the likes of The Miz, Sami Zayn, and Kevin Owens. And that's it for this video. Make sure you hit a broski boot on the like button and perhaps a rough rider on the subscribe button. Peace, I'm out.